Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood and I'm going to take you on an installation in Washington Township, Michigan where there's walkout basements. You can see this deck, you can see, you know, the staircase. When the builders come in and they advertise walkout lots, walkout lots. Well, I got to be honest with you guys, to make that a walkout lot, you lost all your slope. The yard just turns completely flat. Now they allow the engineers that make this work so that it gets approved 1% slope. Water only drains on 1% slope when it's on concrete and not even on asphalt because asphalt's kind of wavy. So you, you got to have 2% slope on asphalt. But in grass, you know, you want 3% slope, you know, as a bare minimum. And they really need to do something about this. But Unfortunately, you know, that's politics. A guy like me, I'm never going to, my voice will never be heard. It is what it is. They're letting the engineers get away with 1% slope. So these yards are crazy flat, stupid flat. You can't get water out of the turf grass. These walkout lots are definitely job security for me. And even the houses where they just do giant daylight windows for the basements where they couldn't cut it down to be a walkout because by the time they got to 1% slope, you know, they weren't at floor level. They weren't at ground level. But again, to get those daylight windows for those basements, you cut your backyard down really flat. Now, if that's what you want and you, you know, you, you dream of a walkout, you dream of daylight windows, you got to have them. Just know you're putting in French drain. That's all. If you're going to be purchasing that house or building that house, definitely budget make sure you have the money and the funds for a French drain because you are going to need one. Now, in this case, what we did is we put this French drain right on the property line so that the neighbors could pitch in. A couple of them paid for this. And when four lots meet at a corner, guess what? You end up with four sprinkler heads in a corner. That's a lot of water. So that's why you see this French drain, how it wise off like that. The reason why it wide off like that, we went around four corner sprinkler heads. I figured they can throw the water, keep the grass green, but when they turn off, they're the lowest sprinkler head in the sprinkler system. So when it turns off, they sit there and seep water for hours upon hours. Now, we did have to have an inspection for our corn tap. So Francisco's you know, doing a nice clean corn tap of the storm drain and the inspector, I was just sitting there, um, you know, talking to him while we were waiting on that because it's, it's boring as heck. And, you know, they're just doing their job. So this is an aerial of what we're doing. You can see how we're right in between, you know, everybody's homes here. We're just, we cut a groove right, right through that low point where we can make the biggest difference and you guys know our A to Z program. You know, we do have a special sod cutter. It's really expensive. I mean, in my world it is because I come from sod cutters only costing, you know, 1600 bucks or something like that. And that one was $5,000. But it does give us a nice three inches of dirt and root. So we end up with a really nice turf mat. And that's important because when we're done, we're going to put that right over top of our French drain system with no extra dirt, and it's going to grow just fine. So we're building a road down into this yard. We got a pretty steep hill to go down because it's a walkout. And then we're building a plywood road right along the trench that we're going to be excavating. We have our high octane, and I believe this system took three high octane. I think it, we went with a a try on this. So here's the inspector. He's coming by. Uh, Gabby's, you know, just um, greeting him, uh, you know. So now he's going to have a conversation with Francisco, and he wants to be told how we're going to go about this before we even do a thing. That way he could approve our method. So Francisco shows him, hey, we got this core drill with these carbide tips. We know what we're doing. We're going to core it, and we're going to carefully remove that core, and then we're going to tap it, and then we're going to use hydraulic concrete, 
with a sleeve that's schedule 40 and this will meet to their demands. This is what we do anyways. This is what we do all the time and they approve it. They also approve our fabric. They also approve our inch and a half round rock. And yes, they do look at everything. This is in Washington Township, Michigan. They're used to our methods, but again, just so that everybody's dotting their I's, crossing their T's, it just, we have to have that conversation. We have to do that dance. You know, it's just part of the deal. It's no big deal. I love working in Washington Township, Michigan. I love the building department. I, I'm telling you, the the residents are dynamite. It's, you know, we've worked for some amazing people in Washington Township. This is Glacier Point, and this also is a, a place that we take care of the snow removal. It's a condo association, and it's on a golf course. It's beautiful, it's, but the condos end up with so much snow because the wind blows off the golf course and just puts big drifts in the streets. So we have agricultural tractors to remove those drifts. We're really equipped for it. We're really set up for it. And I've been their guy for so many years that they, you know, I, I kind of retired from the snow removal, but they wouldn't let me go. Uh, they weren't having it. And uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that they insisted on keeping me on because uh, it gives me something to do in the winter. But you see Valente's down in that trench. He's cleaning that trench, and you'll also see him clean off the plywood. Every time that track hoe dumps dirt on the plywood, he wants to hurry up and scrape it back in the trench so that Francisco can get it in the next scoop. Now, see why we're using a track hoe? You see why we're swinging a track hoe here? We scoop the dirt out of the trench. We put it in the bucket of the ditch witch. We handled that dirt one time. Now, if you use a trencher, the trencher's grinding up the dirt and it just pukes it to the side. So that's handling it once. Now you got to get in the trench and clean the dirt out. That's handling it twice. Now you got this big pile of dirt on the plywood that you got to scoop up with a ditch witch and shovel into the ditch witch bucket with a, a flat shovel. Now you're handling the dirt for a third time. If you're a young contractor and you're trying to learn how to make money at this, you're trying to learn how to make money at landscape, the key is you don't want to handle any material, anything extra than once if you're bringing base material in for a lifted patio. Okay, so you got to dump it in the street. Then you scoop it up and you put it right where it needs to go. So look at how these houses are built. You can see how all the water funnels right right there i mean and that's where our drain is a lot of people are like help me with the design of my drain i don't know where to put my drain you want to go through the heart of where it's the worst you want to find the center of your drainage situation and go right through the heart of it and here you know we just went around those four sprinkler heads that are in the corner of those lots and you can see the guys are cleaning up real nice here i mean they're cleaning as they go along. I made mention that when Francisco takes a scoop with that track hoe, Valente, if any dirt falls on the plywood, pushes the plywood off, pushes the dirt off the plywood back into the trench. That's so that the cleanup is super easy. So be efficient. Be extremely efficient. Whether you're a DIYer or a contractor, don't make a mess for yourself. If you're taking care of business from the start to finish of this job, it's going to go in quicker you're going to be able to do these systems at a more economical price, which you're, you know, that's, you're going to be a company that's more appealing to people. You're going to have plenty of work. You know, we're always booked out, you know, three months is the typical wait for us. And that's because we give the homeowner the most value for their dollar. So right here, it's time for the stone to go in, but the last of the little dirt crumbs that fell into the grass we're just blowing off. All right, so once we have the hydraulic concrete around the PVC sleeve, the gentleman has to come back. We can't bury that until he sees it. So we're all set with Washington Township as far as they're concerned. Yeah, guys, I get it. You know, it's a little bit of an inconvenience on our end, but you want to know something? They just want us doing everything the right way 
And there's too many contractors out there to just take a sledgehammer and just beat on one of those basins. And so they put fracture cracks throughout the structure. And then people wonder why they got the, all this erosion around that drain basin. And it's literally soil falling in. And they have to keep adding dirt. You know, so I see these things. And unfortunately, I, I see them too often. That's how most landscapers get into one of these things. They don't have the equipment. They're, they don't want to rent the equipment. And they never take the time to uh, do it right. And they will never notify Washington Township to have them come look at it. They'll just quickly go about it and be on their way. So now we're putting in the high octane. This is the French Drain Man high octane drainage pipe manufactured by the Boffman Tile Company. And we're taking this pipe and we're going underneath all the sprinklers, you know, Again, I love going under sprinklers. I tell you guys this in each and every video, we try to go under the sprinklers. Then that way you, you know you didn't do a shallow dig. You're going to take care of more of the subsurface soil water and saturation. We're going to hook up this bottom pipe to our corn tap of that storm drain catch basin. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. So we're putting some stone in, and I do know that the guys, as we went further downstream, they added more pipe, and this is normal practice for us. So keep in mind, you know, you need more pipe as you're picking up water. The longer the system, you know, a lot of people just build a quad pack from start to finish, and then they don't have to think about it. And that's not a bad plan. That's foolproof. That's doing it right. So the high octane has 17 and a quarter square inches of inlet, that blue pipe, per linear foot. That's more than any other pipe in the world. It's built, purpose built for yard drains because yard drains are shorter runs than agricultural or commercial properties. You got to grab all the water in an 80 or 100 or 150 feet typically. So that's why we love the high octane. All right, everybody, until that next video.